The media is the message and the messenger, and increasingly a powerful one. People learn more from media than any other single source of information. So if we want to understand what's going on in our society in the 21st century, we have to understand media. If you think about media and technology, they're delivering content that is shaping our society. They're shaping our politics, they're shaping our national discourse, and most of all, they're shaping our children's brains and lives and emotions. We estimate that there's somewhere north of a billion people who use the internet every single day. That's just a reach that hasn't existed before in terms of media. Our kids today live on Facebook and cell phones. The diversity of the platforms means that those images are impacting your kid 24-7. And whatever restrictions existed when we were growing up simply don't exist today. Girls get the message from very early on that what's most important is how they look, that their value, their worth depends on that. And boys get the message that this is what's important about girls. We get it from advertising, we get it from films, we get it from television shows, video games, everywhere we look. So no matter what else a woman does, no matter what else her achievements, their value still depends on how they look. There is no appreciation for women intellectuals. <laughs> it's all about the body, not about the brain. You all saw the famous uh, photo from the weekend of Hillary looking so haggard and what, looking like 92 years old. Breast implants, did you have them or not? Because that's all over the internet about you in mainstream media. I think if you waterboarded Nancy Pelosi, she wouldn't admit to plastic surgery. The fact that media are so limiting and so derogatory to the most powerful women in the country, then what does it say about media's ability to take any woman in America seriously? You get a woman in the Oval Office, most powerful person in the world, what's the downside? You mean besides the PMS and the mood swings? The media treats women like and it's horrible, and it's like, I don't know how we survive it. I don't know how we rise above it. Media creates consciousness, and if what gets put out there that creates our consciousness is determined by men, we're not going to make any progress. An aspect of media literacy education that I think many people aren't aware of is the whole political economy of the media. Most media get their revenues from advertising. This is all about capitalism. The exploitation of women's bodies, cells, products, magazines, etc. This notion that these media companies are just giving us what the public wants. No. They're giving us what the media companies want, they're giving us what the advertisers want, and they're packaging it in such a way as to make it sound like it's our fault, and it's not. A lot of advertising is based on making people feel anxious and feeling insecure. The effect is primarily subconscious. It is very harmful, but for the most part, we're not really aware of that. As a culture, women are brought up to just be fundamentally insecure. I remember fifth grade, I was worrying about my weight, and now I'm in ninth grade, I'm still worrying about my weight. I have like close friends that like in between uh, like break periods, they will go to the bathroom and put on like 10 pounds of makeup, you know, and you're at school to learn. In a world of a million channels, people try to do more shocking and shocking things to break through the clutter. They resort to violent images, or sexually offensive images, or demeaning images. It creates a climate in which there's widespread and increasing violence against women. When is it going to be enough? We're socializing boys to believe that being a man means being powerful and in control. Ooh, la, la. Being smarter than women, or better than women, or our needs get met first in relationships with women, that's not genetically predestined. That's learn behavior. I definitely am not one to conform to the we need to be hyper masculine and we need to be misogynistic stereotypes. Um, I'm and it really puts a lot of pressure on me when I have relatives who have grown up with this phenomenon who attempt to put me on that path but I'm not ready for it. Little boys and little girls, when they're seven years old, an equal number want to be president of the United States when they grow up. But then you ask the same question when they're 15, and you see this massive gap emerging. We're 
we're shortchanging voices that are urgently needed in public forums from ever getting to the table. If people knew that Cuba, China, Iraq, and Afghanistan have more women in government than the United States of America, that would get some people upset. No wonder we are in such trouble in this country. We've been choosing our national leadership from 6% of the country. As the most powerful country in the world, if you're not standing for the right values and for the right principles, that's a loss for the world. You can't be what you can't see. Growing up, there was nobody who looked like me on television. So I never dreamed that I could be on television. To see women, to see women leadership in reality and on the screen and in television is huge for women, huge. I got cast in A League of Their Own and I had 13 or 15 year old girls coming up to me. Was like, oh my God, you have no idea that movie changed my life. I play sports because of that movie. And it really struck me how few opportunities we give women to have that kind of experience watching a movie. There is such a hunger among young women for mentorship. It is far overdue that we women say, Alleluia, sister, whatever gets you through, I'm there to support you. One of the things that really surprised me was the number of women in positions of power in television who reached out to me and said, can I take you out to breakfast? Can I take you out to lunch? Can I make sure that you have my phone number or my email address so that if anything comes up? Um, and it was definitely wasn't like the gender mafia going on <laughs> in the media, but there was an overt effort to both welcome me and make me know that women who had gone before me who had fought to get where they were were both happy that I was there and wanted to be resources to me. And there's an expectation that I will be a resource to other women. We're creating new leaders and they're going to not look like how they always did, an older white male. They're gonna look like a woman and they're gonna look like people of color. And that is the true reflection of this country and of this world. The media can be an instrument of change um, it can maintain the status quo and reflect the views of the society, or it can awaken people and change minds. It depends on who's piloting the plane.